Yo guys, it's your boy Edison back with a new video. It's gonna be a really practical approach with these compressors today. I'm gonna just basically go over it and just showing examples where I like to use what kind of compressors. And maybe a little bit open up about why. Why this compressor here and why these settings. Like what I'm looking for with the settings. I think this is a good example and this is a good practical way to approach it and show it to you. And it, it will help you, it will benefit the most, because I don't just give you some generic examples. I give you something that actually sounds good and has been working in a context. This is a mix I did a few days back in 5 hours 30 minutes basically. Now it's been maybe open 15 minutes before I started doing this video. Uh, we could listen to this first. Everything with the compressors, we are focusing on the compressors, are there for a reason. I will explain. What's that reason to me? And it's again something I like to use. You can always experiment and try to find your settings. But I will always explain it very carefully. What's, what is it all about? Okay, let's listen to it now. I just want to say it like I wanted to listen to it completely through because it actually sounded so good to me. I loved that sound what I achieved. There is many things what is making this happen. And like it's about the control. It's mostly about the control. And we can start from the bass. Let's go from the like below up. Like what I'm doing with the bass here. Okay, it's very basic 808 kind of sound. Equalization, of course. Some. 100 is very important with the bass and 1000 I like. This is like maybe R&B style boosted from 1000. Kramer is actually doing a little bit of compressor to it already. I'm starting with the saturation. You can like do it other way around also. But like with this, it's like that. I'm actually handling as a bus here with the bass. I, I don't have any bass buses. I'm making sure here it is middle. Just separation, it's merged to middle. And then, uh, this is the compressor I gone with. And really, this is gonna be super fast. Like, the attack is now slow. It's giving a lot of transient opportunity to come through. A lot of that transient of a bass is coming through. You can see now. And over 3, three dBs, 4 dBs. And it's keeping hold on it. And there is the ratio. 4 to 1 is really good with bass. Knee didn't touch it. There is the knee. You kinda 
can visualize it in your head. There, you get more reactiveness. I wanted this really smooth base. That's why I'm not touching here. But I can actually make it react more to the high frequencies like this. It's more reactive. Like that. Let's see when this note comes. It's more reactive. Because it's reacting only to the high frequencies. It's compressing the low frequencies, only reacting to the high frequencies. Now it's like smooth. It's reacting to every frequencies. Mm. Maybe like that it would be a little bit more natural sound. And I don't bother, there might be a little, because the release is so fast, there might be a little bit of this artifacts coming to it. So sometimes you need to a little bit raise the release. But you're actually losing the low end. Like this. But now you give the all of it. Because it's letting go a bit faster with the transient. But like that's basically, basically the idea. You can also add some hold. It hold, holds on to it with this a little bit differently. But that's the natural. You can always blend them, dry and wet signals together if you like the sound better like that. It's like almost like parallel processing then. But I like to keep it very smooth and it's only the compressor. And we have the drum here. Like, this is the drum. I really don't have the low end with this drum, so it doesn't have to dock. It doesn't have to dock here. There is some docking happening on the chorus when there is the kick drum coming, like this. And th that's why we go to the kick drum here now. And th this is part of the compressing. At least it's, it's part of the things starting to work together. So we have from the kick drum to the bass, this side chaining happening. So I've side chained it here, you can see. And it's going to the track spacer. And sometimes I go mid side processing if I have a stereo bass and then turn it a little bit like mid to the middle frequencies because the kick normally sits in the very middle. But sometimes it's, it depends. You really need to know this, of course, or it depends. And it's only docking to low frequencies when the kick hits. You see, it just gives the low end of the kick space. It's working nicely together now. Like that's the whole idea. I kept it very simple. I like the samples, you know. You know, a guitar. Take the guitar. And this is, this is basically just taking the first peaks, catching the first peaks, taming it a little bit. One good thing you could go over, maybe not with the guitar, it's not necessary often, if you have really good performance, as I have really balanced it. I have really smooth guitar performance here. Also with the vocal, similar thing happens. What's this track? Yeah, the guitar. That's the... I did, I think I did more compression with this. Yeah. It, it makes it a lot of more aggressive. What's happening here with the attack and release? This is FET compressor and what I found is that it's good compressor for being the first compressor. It's because when you use super fast release, it is actually so fast. It's the fastest compressor you can find. There is another option what I have here. It's the soft tube FET compressor. This, this is pre pretty expensive, but that's also a FET type. Fast. That is just the word I would keep in mind when talking about FET compressors fast compressor. So it's hyper fast and 4 to 1 ratio when I'm using and I like this attack. It's again, it's low. It's like when it's one, it's as low as possible here. 
This is how it works with the this at, at least this model LA76 CLA76. Very fast release. Again, it's just reacting much faster. It's keeping all of it there basically. Now that I'm compressing so hard, it is taming it and catching the peaks. You see, catching the peaks, trying to stay in the 3 dB area, but then catching the peaks. It is aggressive. There is some manipulator widening happening only. You can actually download this widening plugin from Polyverse for free. Just if you want some widening plugin. I think that is freely available. I can put links below of the video. Um, what else is happening here? There is some P controller action. You have a reverb side chaining here. Yeah, it's keeping the keeping the guitar on top of the reverb here. And I'm actually playing with the chorus with the reverb. Delay is going to the reverb. Delay is also going to the bus. And I didn't have any other compressions here. There is actually one better, I would say maybe it's a little warmer. It's this CLA3A. I think that's some, some form of transistor compressor. I'm not sure. It's more suitable. I've seen many professionals using it with the guitar. LA2A is an optical compressor, but like I'm not going to the technicals. It is just good warm sounding compressor. I like to use it with the vocal. This is slow compressor. Some professionals are using this CLA2A peak catching compressor. But I don't like it because it's not that fast. It's hard to get it fast. Maybe if I would, like let's see the vocal. There is one, I, I can, like this is again very down to earth way to put it. Like if I would put this flat all the way to the right, this could give me maybe more space to it reacting a little bit faster. Let's see. Let's see, is it re more reactive when I turn it to the right? Let it be on, let it be like a storm. Like, let's see here. Let it be chaos, kind of yeah, now it doesn't wrong. react, you see. Let it be wrong. Let it be life long. Let me in without. Do you hear when I go a little bit more to the right, I get a little bit more resolution to the vocal. And it's similar thing here when you go f with the fast release. H listen to it. It's the main vocal. Maybe a solo it. Look when I take this really slower. Let it be on. Let it be like a storm. I lose the crispiness of the vocal. That's why fast release works so well with vocal. You maybe heard it. Let's go replay. It's just fast. Let it be on. Let it be like a storm. You hear? Let it be chaos. You get more of that uh, thing if you want it. If you want to control it more. You can do something like this. With some vocal, female vocalists, I found that when you go a little bit like this, it maybe softens it a little bit, the vocal performance, when there is some mosquitoes in the vocal. So this might be a good articulation trick. You go more over of the articulation with the attack knob, actually. Let it be on, let it but you get, be like a storm. You easily get too much of the transient with the vocal if it's too slow. That's also a thing. But now that's it. I go back over to the guitar because there is important thing happening with it's going delay reverb and the side chaining of the reverb happening here. This is the lead guitar. And then we go to the bus. And it, actually the main guitar is also bust here. And we are doing compression again. Let's go over and listen to the guitars. Compression, 3 dB. I love the number of 3 dB. When you go in layers, this gives you a lot of space it to sound really natural at the end result. At the end. Then we go Saturn, it's saturating, boosting to low end, just to keep the warmth to it. Warm tape and boosting to low middle frequencies. This helps it to sound really warm, the guitar. Not gonna steady it anymore. 
but it's actually one form of compression when you add saturation. It's make, maybe it richer and more balanced, more warm, more down to earth, more grounded, everything good words. Maybe if you boost higher ends, maybe you get some crispiness if you like. It's also important to control some frequencies with equalization, maybe if needed, if need to be. You can needle some frequencies or then you can go over to use some Sooth or TDR Nova kind of plugins which are gonna ta be taming those frequencies. One good way would be go over and try to find these bad frequencies like this. Maybe there is something bad you hear, there is something bad. You can even cut it hard here or then take this no note of this frequency number you see here 3380 and now put TDR Nova there a little bit with fast release doing it bounce. Every time there is bad frequency, it's gonna duck it with TDR Nova. This is the setup. That's also a way of compression, way of controlling the dynamics, controlling the bad frequencies, keeping it sweet all the way. Oh yeah, why do think it's stereoizing? Sometimes this is not a preferable thing to do, but sometimes it gives it a little sweet, white feeling to it. It works like that too. Maybe it's a little bit do causing it to go way waving like left to right. There's flangering, flangering happening, so it's giving it this really wavy sound to it. But I liked it, and there is also, of course, maybe something. Yeah, it's super wide. It's going super wide. Middle focus is important thing to keep in mind in mixing. This is going a little bit off from the topic I'm talking here, I'm talking about the compressor. But many of these things go hand in hand to make it sound right, what you want from it. Uh, guitar, yeah, I'm, I'm doing here the main guitar. Little bit compressor, just touching it, touch, just, just a touch. Again, quick release, just keeping it as an important instrument, that's why really fast release. I think CLA76 works good with guitar. If you just keep in mind that you warm it a little bit in the bus, because I guess this Cella 3A is a little bit warmer with the guitar. Yeah, it might be a little more preferable with that. These are my go-tos. I know Dua Lipa's producer also a lot uses just these, and I know he's one of the greatest mixers, one of the greatest producers in the world. So this is this is one of the reasons I like to glue everything together with the Southern saturation and then with ozone 8 I can even like here I can control and use some compression to it and overall gluing will happen of course in the master there is compression the first compression I think is important to be maybe with the slower attack sometimes something else works uh, you need really need to be the mastering engineer to understand this when you hit the sweet spot you need thousands of repetitions doing this to understand this completely so keep practicing most often times slower re attack with fast release works really well it gives the transients there and try to hit maybe again 3d bit just to keep it transparent again compression happening here with the tape saturation Kramer. One of my go-tos, at least in, in the past, it was. It and this helps you really a lot. This tape saturation in the master bus helps you get the loudness higher because it rounds the transients. It rounds the overall of it and eases with the peaks, saturates it, balances it. And yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna help you to in the like later layers if need to be like push it there is some kind of mixes you want to really push give it a push then we go ghoul force it's giving it a certain kind of feel in many ways this plugin is really magical to make it more breathing sounding and then we go over last gluing layer last it's actually the maximizing with widening i did and no stereo eyes anymore in the master. I played with it already in the mixing process. And it's just a touch, you know. This is the chorus. This is actually the hardest part in the track. We can look what the level is. It goes to the harder side. 
It it is kind of hard already. Minus eight point four. I'm not normally I would do even more layering with the compressor in the master bus, but here this is enough. Don't overdo it. You are not here to put out some fires anymore. You're actually just sweetening it up. Maybe make it sound a little bit better. Like what is actually what this track needs? You need a good taste, a lot of practice, and then you will learn this. Uh, with the piano, I think I was doing pretty heavy compression just to tame it down. Release, again, very slow. Slower release. Do we have the piano here? You see. Hard, hard compression. It just helps it to stay lower. Like the guitar is dominating the space, basically. It's also making it a little bit aggressive, but at the same time, because the release is lower, it's like holding on to it more. And this is what you see here. There is a lot of side chaining happening. I'm not gonna go over to that, just to make everything fit together. When you're doing a lot of side chaining, you can add more reverbs and effects. But with poppy music, you really need to be very careful. Okay. Then the vocal anymore. Then we, we actually took everything out from this example. Like it's again 3 dB with fast release. Seven, 5 to 7 dB. 5 to 7 dB, really warm, again optical. This is actually tube compressor, valve compressor. Yeah, I'm using. And I normally go to this more little bit saturating uh, compressors with bass instruments maybe. I'm already adding the saturation here, trying to keep the warmness to it. Most natural sound you can give it, give to it. And this analog stuff really helps with it. This is my way to go about it. This vocal strip, doing some deep low singing, controlling, no compressor there. One thing is to edit the vocal. That is actually one layer of compression. You see, it's very balanced, it's very flat performance. But one thing what helps is go to the audio editor and go over and normalize everything to the same level as best as possible, you know. This is one thing I've done with it already. Yeah, let's go over to the bus. It's always, I'm thinking it as a gluing, gluing place. I'm gluing and everything together. Again, some saturation, not too much. A neutron, again, adding saturation, maybe touching the articulation of the vocalist. Adding attack with medium envelope, taking sustain out. It's actually controlling the reverb now. Controlling the sustain of the reverbs and also the vocal it's in itself. It just makes it a little bit clearer. That's one way of, to do it. Sometimes you want to go even more with the more sustain. It is just very much depends on the case you're working on. Exciter can be used even before the compression. Or like this, this uh, makes different sound happen when you use different combinations here. But like, yeah, this is some exciting again. <laughs> again, doing a little bit compression, we can say. And this is just any more small movements here. 1.4 to 1. Not adding any gain here. But I can even control it if I see it peaking. Always remember the control. And then we, <laughs> this is my style of really getting the vocal in front of you. Like I'm adding imager, <laughs> making it more stereo. Uh, some limiting. It it's actually maybe touching the peaks somewhere. Not really nothing happening with it. Maybe I'm doing it here. Heavy limiting with modern setting, some character. And there is the level I liked. If you mix vocal too high, the background will sound weak, you know. Sometimes it feels good. If you've listened to Billie Eilish, it's just the vocal. You, <laughs> there is no respect to anything else. Just the vocalist is important there. It depends. But those are some ideas I have here on the bank for you with this project, this, with this example. I hope you enjoy it and you find something that will help your mixes come better. It's little messy, messy video, messy explanations. It's analog, making everything rounder, rounding the sound. Uh, like, 
again here analog i love the analog word it's a beautiful word it's always a warm word trying to make everything sound as good as possible and remember always nothing's perfect there is only a good taste and good skill and this will give you results through a lot of repetition thank you for the video thank you for watching see you on the next one subscribe and like the video it will help me a lot peace out <music>